it was like it was a while. I like hello. I think I let hello. <laughs> Don't let me stop. Are we back? <laughs> yeah, we are. are we on? Welcome. Welcome to uh, the first, uh, I think, full, well, we don't even know yet. It's going to be a full stream. The first uh, schedule stream of 2024. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> from, uh, from all of us here around the Haberdashery. Now, we have not. Now, Carol is sick, and so... He is not mm-hmm. gonna make it. Um, I have not heard anything from Matt in a while, and we hope he's still alive. And um, Jacob said that he would be able to rejoin the game now that we're moving to Wednesdays. And he hasn't showed up. Hasn't shown up yet. <laughs> so I don't know if we have enough people to handle this next thing that. Maybe we could go on a submission <laughs> while these people are off. Uh, they will patrol the outside and maybe get arrested. <laughs> or we can just uh, pineapple. We can just pineapple. So I don't know if Tango knows what that is. So um, so we had this whole thing. Um, this uh, So... We, we have a bad habit, or, or in previous groups, we've had a really bad habit of getting off topic and staying off topic for a really long time. And Carol, uh, at her job, when they're in calls, in one of her groups, uh, her, devel- her dev groups, they had a policy where if someone got, if they got off track and they needed to remind everybody to get back on track, someone would say pineapple. And that would remind them all to get back on track. And uh, and so she was like, we could incorporate something like that. And instead, what we did was incorporate exactly that. And so we would say pineapple. Um, in fact, I, I have it as a custom button on my sound. Sa- I have a soundboard now. Um, and I have it as a button over there that I can just push. And um, If I was on the stream, would I have heard that? I would hope that you would have heard it anyway. It should be going to you guys. No, it's we didn't hear it. Oh, dang. Is this even? Yeah. Oh well. Um, but hopefully, stream Next week. heard it. I'm still testing, getting a hang of this whole thing. So, how many buttons you got on your board? Uh, well, for sound effects, I have eighteen. Don't uh, you have the va- voice changer button on there too? There is also voice changer buttons. I can shift my voice higher or lower. Um. And, uh, and I have to a the Bluetooth. malls will do the same thing. Yeah, and I have a Bluetooth button where I can sync it to my Bluetooth to my phone and just play sounds from my phone. Um, which I probably, which is probably great if I like look up a soundboard online for some other sounds. But I'm not really worried about that. Uh, I got sad trombone on here. I got crickets. I got cheering crowd. I got rim shot, suspense. I got the a scream. Um. Record scratch. I have the DJ air horn, which I unironically enjoy that sound, so I have that available. Um, the, 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 bah, 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 bah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one played fine. Oh, that go. was loud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dang, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't. Well, I didn't think you guys would be able to hear it, so I didn't think I had to warn you or adjust the volume. I, I am deaf now. We're still learning. We're all still. I'm still learning how to use this thing. Uh, but anyway, um, yes, yeah, so I have that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so what we did was we started, we decided that we were going to start a talk show. And so we would, we would once a week get together to have a, a, an episode where we would just chat about stuff and let it go off topic. And we called the show Pineapple because of that. And... We no longer do the show as a scheduled thing, but we now allow pineapple to just kind of happen if it needs to. So that's just kind of our name for episodes where we don't have anything else going on and we're just chatting the whole time. Um, so how was everyone's, uh, how was everyone's holidays? 
Oh my god, I got COVID. Did you really? <laughs> Stop. Yeah, the day the day after. So I got the entire week off. Mm. And Monday, uh, so my wife and the kids went to New York for their uh to go see the in-laws. And so I had the house to myself. It was like all perfect. Uh they, they left on Monday. Tuesday I get COVID. Like, you know, I get breakouts and hives and can't breathe. And then Thursday and Wednesday they get back. I give COVID to my wife, who then gives it to her uh, my other my youngest uh, son. So but you know, we had a good thing. We had a good Christmas, but yeah, afterwards it's just been hell because my five days ended on the first, which means I go back to work on Tuesday. So it was the worst vacation uh <laughs> I think I've had. That sucks, dude. I'm sorry. But alive, so hey, that's good. Yeah. How about y'all? I Pretty forgot good. how chaotic my family is. <laughs> how what? My 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 extended family, like my parents and my my siblings and their kids. I was happy to to get home on Christmas <laughs> after Christmas. Don't get me wrong. I love them, but yeah. just like mm, I, I've had enough because <laughs> um, so my mom's birthday is is Christmas Eve. So we always go out on Christmas Eve, celebrate her birthday. Then they go to do whatever they do at their church. And then we all get get back together um, for like uh supper and then which is usually just junk food you mm. know it's christmas cookies and leftovers from from lunch right. but like we had like you know a house full of capable people and anytime something happened they'd call me <laughs> be like <laughs> and of course like i i had like my headphones on i i was trying to to listen to i was actually trying to watch um the first episode of what if on Disney plus and my sister had dropped like a bottle of wine or something like the shelf in the, in their garage fridge had collapsed or something. A couple of bottles of wine fell onto the garage floor mm. and they're yelling at me and I'm just like looking around. I'm like we have like another, like six adults. Why are they calling me? Right. <laughs> So, uh, mine was good. We spent Christmas Eve uh, at my wife's family's. Actually, my uh, my dad's wife, her birthday is the day after Christmas, so they they do stuff. Um, I was obviously they're back in PA, so I, I, I wasn't there for any of that. Um, but the uh, but yeah, so we went with we went to Carol's family down in Connecticut. Uh, for Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day, it was just nice chill at home, and we all opened our gifts and then took time to enjoy our gifts, and that was basically our day. And Carol was off all week. Bless you. That's too funny. Bless you. She, uh, her job, like officially, had like they had their weekend their weekend for Christmas and their weekend time. Like they had days off for Christmas and for New Year's that resulted in there being two days during the week between where everyone just took vacation days because they didn't automatically have them off. Um, so, so Carol had the whole week off as well. And then got sick right at the end. And we, uh, we did New Year's here. Dave came. Um, we're going to plan it better next year so that hopefully other people come. And uh, yeah, that's basically been it. It sounded like it was uh, people stay away though. Was the message I got? Oh, it was. Um, it was. Well, we said, hey, Carol wasn't feeling well, and so she did say, you know, if if you're if you're uncomfortable with that, like, don't go. But uh, we understand, and we were we were debating about canceling, but she wasn't sick enough that we felt we needed to cancel. So um, we might not have clearly communicated that, but whatever. And then Tim's daughter came. 
I drove yeah. Tim's daughter back to my place because uh, she's friends with with my my oldest. And they proceeded to be awake until like six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> like at three o'clock in the morning, they woke up Ren and Ren was like, you guys need to go to bed. You just woke me up. And then six o'clock in the morning, I, I hear like crashing and stuff and yell and laughing and i got up and i was like you guys need to go to sleep now it's six o'clock in the morning <laughs> i think my kids are in their uh teens and 20s and like five o'clock is like i'm i'm waking up to take a piss and they're still gaming out well my my like default sleep schedule and i still do this like if i if i if i have time to myself for multiple days in a row, I'll start to slip into this direction. But my natural sleep schedule is dawn until like noon, two o'clock, somewhere around there. It's it's probably part of the reason I'm so tired all the time is that I'm constantly fighting against my natural sleep rhythm. Well, then what do you do it to then? Are you taking a nap then and wake up or? No, like usually what it is is I fall asleep at dawn. Oh, I got you. And, and then, then wake up at like two. Yeah. At Tim's noon. circadian rhythm is is not in our time zone. No. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like it might be in Australia. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's 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 difficult. Um, but I used to work, and that's why I used to work overnight. People would be like, oh, it's so hard to get used to overnight. I was like, no, no. No, this is exactly what, where I want to be. As long as you get that night's right, you know, that sleep in, it's, uh, the, the overnight shift's not that bad. Yeah. There's one time I did not that somebody had to come wake me up when the customers was a convenience store. <laughs> and they had to come, like, and knock on the door to try to say, <laughs> hey, can I buy this? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess so. That's a... <laughs> hey, Tim, you need to turn up your game just a little bit. When you lean back, we cannot hear you. Okay. There. Um, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I was, I was always fine with it. It was, you know, I, I, so the problem is that, um, well, there's two problems with, with working overnights now. One is that I, I just had to get out of retail. I couldn't do it anymore. Um, and there's not a whole lot of, and I refuse to go work in, I did, I did the steel factory once and I won't go back. Um, and, uh. But the but the big ones are that um, I want to be oh I want to be home and awake at least some of the time that my wife is home and awake, and with, since we have the kids and their standard school day, that's during the day, and um, and the other thing is that it was a lot easier to be overnight <laughs> back in PA because everything was open twenty four hours, all the WalMarts twenty four hours. Most of the restaurants were 24 hours. Like, all the grocery stores were 24 hours. So, the gas stations. So, it didn't matter. Like, I could do... I could just run all my errands at 3 in the morning. And it didn't matter. Um, but that's not true here. I, I haven't... I haven't found a place in Massachusetts that is consistently, like... Where there's a lot of things that are up to 24 hours. Is that uh, Philadelphia or all of PA? Um, well, I'm not... I'm from the. I I live closer to Philadelphia now than I did when I lived in PA. Um, yeah, no, I'm from the. I'm from the other side. Uh, I'm from the Pittsburgh area. Closer to Pittsburgh. Much, much closer to Pittsburgh. <laughs> we don't like Philly people. No, uh, but it's a. Uh, but no, um, yeah, I don't. I don't know because, I don't know if Philly's like that because I've never. I've. I've never been uh unfortunate enough to spend that much time there um i but western pa where i lived and the pittsburgh area were all kind of like that pennsylvania is such a boring drive to drive across the state up until you hit like the mountainous areas but it's just like just cow fields yeah that's fine <laughs> that's, that's also half the midwest yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pennsylvania is the first spot I had. Was it called like Spackle? Yeah. Yeah. No, I never had it again. 
I, I am aware of I am aware of that. Uh, and I was like, oh, look, it's an Amish place. It's like it's gonna have really good wholesome food. And so I was like, all right, give me this spackle. Let me try it. And I think it was the first time I didn't eat a meat on my plate. <laughs> Because I wasn't even sure what kind of meat it was. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is like a combination of like pork, cow, and horse or something. Maybe. Huh? I don't I don't know if I've ever had it, honestly. You, you you would you would know if you did. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of I don't think there's there, there's not a lot of there's not enough A one in Pennsylvania for me to have it again. <laughs> we we had a lot of Amish on. where I was from, but um but yeah, I don't think we well, because what it is is the Amish over by Lancaster are touristy. Like, there's, they're, they're really kind of ingrained into the touristy mindset of the area. And so, like, uh, they're kind of the thing people come to see and they sell into that. They, they, they participate in that. Um, the second highest, at the time when I lived there, the second highest density of Amish in PA was in a town in western PA called Valant. And that was, I lived near there. And uh, they were not. Like, you'd go to an Amish store and get, like, Amish crafts and, and cookies and stuff, but they weren't really interested in being a tourist attraction. And so there was a lot more separation between them and everyone who wasn't Amish. So what you're saying, Tango, is <laughs> I should I should make Scrapple on the smoker for the next barbecue. Ooh, I would like to see that. Uh, it I, sounds I might to... gross. You, you can you can take the first bite, and as you so, start pulling it apart and it crumbles. I mean, um, hmm, it's pork usually. But, and, and other things, but it's it's, well, yeah, it's it's pork and usually like cornmeal, which made into good. like almost like, like a you meat know, loaf. like you're giving me pork and cornmeal and corn, like yum, yeah, like that on the paper that sounds delicious. But it's usually like pork remnants that are pulled off of the bone, then ground, and yep, then and mixed this down. Yep. So that's like a hot dog. So it's like yeah. one of the favorite people I used to go drinking with was Amish. Hmm. It was like it used to be. Yeah. I think you married into it. I, I've had a number of I've had a number of people in my life who were Amish at the time or had previously been Amish. Um, or they're on their word like on their uh their their leave of absence, yeah, or whatever it is, or whatever it's called. Um, we had we had one girl at a pizza shop I worked at. She was on her spring rock spring or something. Um, she was on that. She was on her time away uh, when she was working at the, and she was working at the pizza shop to afford an apartment while she was doing that. Um, and she did not acclimate well. <laughs> Oh. But the uh but yeah, like my uh I, I had this there was this couple that I went to church with growing up who um actually my uncle ended up marrying one of their daughters. Um and uh they they had grown up Amish and then left and... This is my my uh Christmas presents I got for my wife. It's a what cube that? that as you turn it it changes the uh Colors, huh? So you can change it. It reminds me of a Nintendo Cube emblem, like you know, like I could see that being <laughs> the, uh, for Nintendo in the old days. Or was it PlayStation, GameCube, or Game whatever Game that was? Yeah. Yeah. I was quite happy. I didn't get anything for Christmas, basically. Oh, really? I don't ask for anything for Christmas. I didn't really ask for anything either, but I got yeah. stuff anyway. So, I got some, some little two things. 
Uh, just a stocking full of Hershey uh, Hershey milk chocolate bars, which is like nice, the perfect candy for me. <laughs> yeah, I got some peppered beef jerky and some Rolos, and then my kid oh. got my kids got me a Mandalorian uh, Christmas ornament. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I got. I, I got, got my kid no. kangaroo jerky. Ooh, that sounds. And we good. tried it, and it tastes like little hairs. Like if you were to think of something that, like you know, it, it's it's the kangaroo tastes like small hairs. Like rabbits, you mean, or like? No, rabbits. I think would have a little bit longer hair taste, maybe. But I'd have to go you try mean, a rabbit and compare. The consistency is hairy. Like it feels no, like, like the smell in my mouth after I like you know you you chew it up and like the, the taste of it was very gamey. Oh, okay. And as I like uh, exhaled through my nose to kind of try to get the sense of it, it was very kind of like felt leather, you know, like the smell of leathery, but a little bit of that kind of leather that still has a hair on it. Well, you th- would think that like a kangaroo wouldn't be all that tender in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty so. And I, I wrapped it up. Have you guys seen like the uh, the Christmas party thing where you take a package and you just like coat it in? Uh, yes, I used to do that. I, I did this one in packaging tape. Uh, so it came in like a, a beef, a, a butcher, butcher's paper. So yeah. I wrapped the butcher's paper and I wrapped the butcher's paper in packaging tape and then put <laughs> it inside of the packet, you know, the gift wrap and the gift wrapped it together with packaging tape. Nice. Uh, so it's kind of like you know, kangaroos are fighters. So it's like, hey, there's fight in this one. I know? did that to my best friend one Christmas, and then in between the packaging tape, I wrapped um like twenty five pound fishing line <laughs> <laughs> in between layers. <laughs> it's probably like Kevlar. Kevlar. Man. He was so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got my, so this is when we were teens. Um, <clears throat> my brother was pissing me off one year and it was near, it was getting to, around to December and he was, he was really he pissed me off. I said, listen, if you don't knock it off, you're getting like an empty bottle of Mountain Dew for Christmas. And he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like kept, and on Christmas morning, he opened his present for me and it was an empty 20 ounce bottle of Mountain Dew. And uh, and he was so mad. But then, the following year, uh, his his birthday came around, and he was being a dick again. And so he opened his present for me that year at that time, and it was just an empty two liter of Mountain. <laughs> Oops. And uh... yeah, you just need you need to continue that trend. Yeah, and just like mail him like empty like. Aluminum cans yeah. of no. <laughs> I was like an empty twenty four pack, you know, like yeah, an yeah. empty cube. Yeah, just the cube. Yeah. As cube long as he ball. doesn't live in Wisconsin, right? Was that the one, the state that like was uh they were doing the Seinfeld thing? It was either Wisconsin or Michigan. That was Michigan. Michigan. Were... <laughs> that was Michigan. Uh he does not live in Michigan. No, he lives in PA. Uh <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, basically all of my gifts are right here, I think, most of them. Like, there's the soundboard that Carol got me. And I have a dice tower now my son got me. Leather, and it folds flat. And uh, there's some painting stuff and some drawing stuff. And uh, this fancy quill pen set that I haven't used yet, but I'm Nice. Yeah, stuff like that. We did a couple white elephants. One at uh, one at my wife's family's place. Um, and for that one, I got. I don't know what I got. That one. And then at the other one was at my church. My church. Um, one of one of my kids hey. there. Hey. And, Oh, and I got some D6s for Paleomythic. Nice. 
Hey, I don't see the extra life site or uh, page anymore. Did that end officially then? So it, it resets over? every year. So you have so, a new team ID every year? Yes, yeah, so we have a new team ID every year. Um, which if you go to, if you're, I don't know if you're on the stream or not. Well, I was trying to get to the stream. I got there last time through the extra life page. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, so uh, there should be in the Discord... I'll send you the link to... In the Extra Life channel in the Discord, there should be a link to the team page. The stream. That's the stream. Yeah, I saw the, uh, I saw the stream links there. And then... I'll send you the Extra Life link as well. So I only see the uh, Pathfinder Anders March from the... Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's the saying that they update your team ID every year. It's like, yeah. So it's um, well, it's the whole thing. Um, so yep. it's because you have to re you have to update your individual fundraising page as well. Um, yep. but that's not that's not Extra Life's decision. That's the way that Donor Drive is set up. I don't know why. It's probably for for tax reporting purposes. It's probably for tax reporting purposes. But yeah, so Donor Drive. Um, I think they did start to switch over to a new thing called Tiltify or something. Um, but yeah, it's it's set up so that you have to kind of renew every year. I still think it'd be better to have the same uh, your same ID so you can use the same link every year. And if you didn't show up, then it'd be gone. Well, they do allow that for individual pages now. So if you go to, if you type in extra dash life.org slash participant slash T E McLaughlin. That would go to my page. Even though the, um, even though the user ID number changes every year, that URL will go to my page every year. Um, so they do, they do now have a persistent URL option, but, um, but it's only for the individual pages, not for the team pages. So. And we should be a few seconds behind, right, in the stream? Yeah. Yeah, stream should be a, a couple seconds behind. It's uh, fun. I'm watching the two of them now here and seeing us wave back and forth. Yep. I'm corny. I like those things. Yeah. I usually just pay attention to the chat. Have. Yeah. So what what happened to your camera there? Why'd you why'd you go dark a few uh, a few months ago? Oh, my office is just a huge mess, <laughs> and I don't really. I haven't had time to clean it up, and I don't want it on stream on stream because it's so disgusting. <laughs> so it's easier just to have my camera off than to have like boxes, piles of boxes and stuff. I like my mess. I think it adds character. I'm thinking about moving some of this stuff though, and replacing it with my uh, RPG book. But I'm not sure which stuff. Because like this shelf is all Bibles, uh, except for that stuff over there. All this is Bibles. So I kind of want them except. Like How many you got? Like, was that six? Uh, uh, there's six full Bibles here, and then two and two or three in my back. Oh, yeah, two or three in my backpack. Three. So three in my backpack. Six full Bibles up here, and then this is just the. Old Testament, but it's Hebrew and English. These two are just these three. Or, okay. Okay. This one is the Old Testament and the Apocrypha in Greek. These two are the New Testament in Greek, but this one's in your linear, so it has Greek and English. This one's just. And then. Do you one, do you read ancient Greek or is that just yeah, for fun? Yeah, I, I read Koine Greek. It's not ancient. Greek. Um, 
So Koine Greek is the Greek that the New Testament is written in originally. Um, it was the it was the language of the common people in the Roman Empire. Uh, it is a later development than ancient Greek, like Homeric Greek, is a different Greek. But I, I don't know. Um, it's different enough that I, I can't read it. Uh, and modern Greek is different enough that I can't. I had trouble with this too. Um, but I do read Koine Greek. Yeah. Um, I have not learned Hebrew. I, I was Are you going to? Is that is that a good goal of yours? Um, it's one of the languages I would like to learn. I, I was, when I was in Bible college, the next semester I was supposed to start Hebrew. And then I left that college. And the one I'm in now doesn't have language courses. So, um, so yeah, I, I'd have to go and I had to put in effort to, to learn biblical Hebrew. Because, like, even on Duolingo, the Hebrew on there is modern Hebrew. It's not... It's not um, biblical Hebrew, <clears throat> so I'd have to I'd have to seek out courses for that. But I do because I was about to take a course in it. I do have some textbooks for Hebrew, so I could start studying it myself. Um, but I definitely won't have the pronunciation right if I do that. <laughs> But yeah, biblical Hebrew is is one of a handful that I, I I'd like to get started on, but haven't. But that's what this level is like. Basically, this this is like a dictionary and thesaurus in English, but then everything over from that is is biblical language. So, if I want to put my RPG book here, I have to figure out, I, I don't want the Bibles off of this shelf, because I, I use them pretty frequently. Um, but I could probably get rid of some of the stuff on the bottom shelf, and then move things down. I could do that. So I have, I have three homes for books right now in my office. There's that, and there's the bookcase that's in my closet, which is where the RPG books are right now, as well as my books on the occult and folklore and history. And then over here is five ten-foot-long shelves of Christian theology. And uh, what, what's what? like your folklore or your and uh. Uh, folk tales and lore, or is that part of the role playing game folk lore? No, it's it's a uh, real world folklore and folk tales. Nice. Is it all around the world, or are you kind of focus on a specific area? Um, a lot of it is uh, British Isles, uh, especially uh, especially Ireland. Um, but there is there is stuff from North America. There's, I think, one book from Africa. Um. Couple things like that. There, there's, yeah, there's there's one that's Native American folk tales. There's one that's just like North, like modern North American, like uh, you know European American uh, folk tales. Um, there's one that there's a bunch that are Irish or British. Um, yeah, and then there's. Uh, there's some occult stuff over there. Like, there's a book on uh, magical practices in the Roman Empire and some stuff about, like... I used to have... A, a friend of mine who's a druid gave me a book of, like, rituals and uh, lore and all this other stuff that he would use in his practice that he had updated. He had he'd gotten a new one and uh, gave me his old one. And I don't... I don't think it survived some of the moves. I don't think I have it anymore. But I stuff like that. Over there.
Well, yeah, my dad uh, had his had a surgery on his knee, and he got a uh, got the clearance to drive. He has a brand new knee. Uh, nice. And uh, I guess it was about a like the beginning of December, and uh, he just got the clearance to drive again, which is like insane. He's doing great. So happy for him. Nice. That's good. He's recovering there. Yeah, way faster than he should be. So, you know, <laughs> hey, that's great for him. All right, so here's your extra life tab. Yes. Yeah, so we're planning out game day. I'm excited about that. Um, we've been talking about a little bit about that. The... Uh, the Hungry Dark is the story we're doing for that. And that's going to be D&D 3.5, which I have not played in a little while. I'm very excited to dive back into that. And come up with something for uh, Tabletop Appreciation Weekend. Yet. That's the uh, weekend in April? Yeah. It Historically, it's been in August, and it's usually the weekend of our anniversary, me and Carol's anniversary. And so we end up not being able to do it because we have other plans. Uh, like last year, we were away for that weekend, and Tripper did a special session of the Star Trek game. Um, but this year, if it's an, but this year it looks like it's going to be in April because they announced dates, but apparently some of them are still not solid. Um, but it looks like it looks like that one is going to be in April. And I could bust out I could bust out a game for a quick little one shot at that time. I'm just not sure which game. Because I have a few new ones that I, I haven't had the chance to try yet that I'm, I'm excited to try out. That I might try to do for for Tabletop Appreciation Weekend. We've got, uh, we've got Doctor Who, um, which they just released a second edition of. I have first edition. Uh, but they have, they, I have Doctor Who. Um, I got the Kickstarter book for um, Old Gods of Appalachia in. Um, I, I've had that for a few months. Uh, the the Kickstarter, I... I Supported the Kickstarter for the uh, Cowboy Bebop TTRPG. And that has started shipping, so I should be seeing that hopefully soon. Um, and then I have uh, Sigil and Shadow, which is a, a modern uh, paranormal horror uh, system. So I want to try one of those out. I'm not sure which one yet. But we have options. I'm looking forward to that. There is a story I've really wanted to do for a while now using uh, Doctor Who. But I don't think it would work as a one-shot. So I don't think it will work for... Tabletop Appreciation Weekend. But we'll see. I'll probably end up asking the channel if they have a preference. Do you guys have a uh... Tabletop Simulator? No. On Steam? Oh, I don't know, actually. I have no idea. I have no idea what I have in Steam. Um, I, have to act, I have to literally open Steam. Which I can do real quick. Alright. I, really I guess I don't really need to have this. Because the other thing that... Whoa, 
That's the roll. Because <laughs> we could always, uh, do like, uh, virtual tabletop, uh, board games. Oh, yeah. I just looked up, uh, Welcome to the Moon. They have a plug-in. Oh, do that. they really? Yeah. Okay. I had to Google Moon Board Game because I couldn't remember the name of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I have Steam Open Tabletop Simulator. Yeah. Uh, I do not have that. Is that... Free by chance? No, it's it should be fairly cheap if you look it up on the store thing. I have no money um, for like the next two days, but no, I don't mean for I don't mean tonight. Oh, I'm yeah, just yeah. talking about like in general, yeah. like it's yeah, it's right. yeah, it's ten bucks now. Yeah, it's ten bucks. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, well I wasn't meaning tonight, but I'm I was like if we if we wanted to do like a uh like a tabletop uh you know that that tabletop uh day whatever it was for for extra life tabletop appreciation weekend yeah like we could always have like a virtual event where you know we were all in tabletop simulator or something they had a vast number of games like so uh a friend of mine used to run um or an acquaintance of mine used to run, like we used to do a uh, tabletop simulator every Friday night. And then that person disappeared off the internet. So The video shows people like throwing the table. Yeah, you can you can flip the table. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But they have some pretty good plugins. Like um we used to play Battlestar Galactica, which it takes forever. That like if you ever wanted like um a long board game stream that you, you can play that for hours and hours and hours. Well, I've joked about doing uh, the campaign for North Africa. I don't know if you've heard of that one. Mm -mm. Uh, oh, buddy. Um, uh, the, it's called the campaign for North Africa. Um, it is, it's estimated. You just blocked up, dude. Did I really? Am I back? Yeah, you're okay now. Okay. Well, what? I think Steam is probably updating something in the background <laughs> if you didn't close it back up. Oh, you know what? It probably is. Um, kill it. Oh, it's it's updating Baldur's Gate. God, no. I mean, you could just close out of Steam and it'll. It'll pause it, it's pause not, the update. It's not giving me a... I closed the window, but it's not giving me a... In the tray, it's not giving me a close option. You gotta usually right-click and close. Yeah, I right-click and I have store, oh. friends, and then a list of games. And that's it. Uh, oh. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go into here. Exit. Oh. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So Tango, a couple of weeks ago, I, or was it a few weeks ago? I, Tim, Tim, I, I made Tim go into his crawl space, and we we ran ran Ethernet cable and <laughs> from his router to his office, and then to Carol's to Carol's uh, computer as well. Yeah. And it, did it work? Did it, everything it, it, go? Uh... Oh yeah, it does so much better now. So much better. Except I, I, the, uh... go ahead. 
I said I'm on the uh, Ethernet over power, and that is like a nine day difference for yeah. uh, Wi Fi, and so much easier. So I um I had crimped a couple of of uh like you know six five foot five or six foot run runs as well so that they could um so they weren't running the cable that was running from the basement you know to their computers just in case the clips broke or anything i i put couplers on but there was one cable that i i swear i i redid the cable like 10 times and it didn't work and it turns out that there was like a short like in one of the one of the twisted pairs <laughs> oh I brought it home. I was like, let me crimp this again. Cause I'm like, there's no way that I crimped this wrong like 10 times in a row. And sure enough, I, I recrimped it, redid it, plugged it into my router, to <laughs> my, my switch. I'm like nothing. So I was just like, okay, that cable is getting thrown away. Yeah. I, uh, Yeah, but the campaign for North Africa is a board game. It's a board war game. Okay. It's it the board itself is nine and a half feet long. Um, and it's estimated that it could take up to fifteen hundred hours to complete. How wide is it? Um. Uh, I don't know. Um, oh, I almost bought one of these games at a at a yard sale. Um, I had a, I had bought a game that was called uh, Blitzkrieg. Mm. That's that looks like you know that was similar. Yeah, and it the board was like this big, and it had like it had like five million of those cardboard punch out pieces. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like. <laughs> This, Go ahead. All right. So this game comes with uh, the maps when placed together form a 34 inch by 115 inch board. Um, it comes with 1600 counters, six booklets, 12 logistical yeah. sheets, three plastic counter storage keys, and one six sided die. Um, the complete campaign game takes 100 turns. Each turn representing one week of game time. Um, do we still have a pineapple channel? I don't know if we do or not. I don't think we do, actually. I mean, we have a... Oh, that's an archived. Okay. I'll, I'll throw it into uh, the tabletop games. The link to the board game geeks. Um, I oh, was crap. Yeah. Let me fix this. Sorry. I sent the link to the screenshot. I saw a thing where it was uh, someone, they published the game and then they were looking at it and they were concerned that it was, it might be unbalanced. And they said, what do we tell people if they complain to us and say that the game is unbalanced? And the guy who created it said, Tell them to play it again and see if it's still unbalanced. <laughs> like, no one's going to. It's 1,500 hours long. So. What is 1,500 hours here? Yeah. So I was, well, I was joking about um, as a challenge for the for the Extra Life group to have, to get a hold of a copy and set it up somewhere and have, like, cameras on it and stuff and actually have us try to complete a, a game of it in one year. Like, um, as, as kind of a, as kind of a side challenge. Cause I mean, I figured out if you, cause it's, it's one of those things where it's like, that would never happen. Your kids would destroy it. The cats would destroy it. Oh yeah. It couldn't be at our house. No. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, in order to play it in one year, we'd have to play, 29 hours a week <laughs> to make it happen. Nine or 29? 29. That's that's a job. 
<laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I was thinking about like if we could get it and find some way to make that in any way feasible, like with sponsorship or, or something, but just just try to just try to get through the game in one year. Um, we would be in multi- we would be in teams, and it would just. Uh, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know. One. I. I. I it's really hard to find the game. Um, but two. I don't know if that would even. If people would even go for it. There's a plugin for it <laughs> in virtual. Is there really? Tabletop oh simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> oh. I'll post that link in tabletop games too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. To this person, this is great. Um, I'm I'm le- I'm on the Wikipedia right now, and it says uh, this game is less about combat and more about managing logistics and supply lines. And like, there's all kinds of little details, like um, the ambient temperature affects how frequently you need to stop to refill the air in your tires in the game. Um, The Italian troops use slightly more water per week because they're boiling pasta instead of just drinking it. Like the British soldiers... And the British soldiers drinking it as tea and stuff. But like... uh, yeah, it says, uh, to give an idea of the game's complexity, reviewer Nicholas Palmer outlined the actions for one side single turn. As a first step before playing, the player or team must make unit organization charts for every one of the hundreds of counters on their side. Then, on each turn, and it lists... Twenty nine steps to take in a turn with uh, for each of those hundred or in total with fourteen sub steps. Um, that's each turn you have to do all of that. It says this entire sequence would then be repeated by the other player or team, and that completes one game turn. And you do that a hundred times to finish the story. And he said one turn is one week. It's 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 one week in game time, yeah. Because it, it's set during World War II. It's right. 1940 to 43. Um, but yeah, it's it's one week of in game time is one turn. One of those twenty nine steps is combat. And one of them is movement. So like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah if you look it up on the wikipedia it is on just just go to wikipedia and look up the campaign for north africa and look at the gameplay section it just like details and then the last two steps are repeat all movement and combat steps the second time repeat all movement and combat steps the third time like And then what are all the calculators for? Um, I Well, I don't know. I've never played the game, so I don't know how everything plays out. But yeah, there's stuff in here like calculate spillage, evaporation of water, and adjust all supply dumps. Determine initiative. Determine weather. Um, distribute water. Reorganize units. Like, it is heavily detailed. I feel you almost need like a group of people on each side. Yeah, so it says up it's here five v five. Yeah, it says five v five. Yeah. It says although nominally a two player game, the rules recommend ten players divided into two teams of five people. <clears throat> and each team composed of a commander in chief, a logistics commander, a rear area commander, an air commander, and a frontline commander. And so like if we did this as a channel, 
what we would do is we would we would make teams and then we would just have everything kind of tracked somewhere that people could see it but we wouldn't necessarily wait like um yeah everyone just kind of have because we'd have to try to get to two just try to get through two turns every week so well if you recorded it could you like mix it up and then you do like the review of like you talk about what the moves were while you're watching them rather than trying to do it real time yeah so that is an idea the problem is the amount of time that that editing is gonna take yeah so it's on top of the playing the game now someone has to spend hours editing um, well so if a i was thinking more like if, an, if a one turn on one side takes like 45 minutes probably more like an hour you said what, 29 plus 14 so it's it my, average comes out to it it's estimated 1500 hours that's 15 hours per turn it's 100 turns remember. so it's 15 hours per turn so seven and a half hours per side. Yeah, roughly. Damn. That's like a... <laughs> that would be hilarious if you just had, like, a 10-year stream of one game of that. Yeah. Where you have, like, a couple of hours a week per stream. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're going to finish steps, you know, one through five in this two-hour session for <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> Where we go through step three to five. Yeah. Tune in next week to watch us put air in our tires. <laughs> but like, it seems like it'd be fascinating to just go all in, just be like, "This is a this is an event we are doing as a channel that is it is going to be a big deal." And yeah. Yeah, uh, Battlestar Galactica doesn't take nearly that long. But it, <laughs> we've had games that have taken probably 12 hours. I remember, well, I, I had people freaking out at me at one point because of a long game of Magic the Gathering. And it wasn't, it wasn't 12 hours, but it was, it was, it was a few hours. And it was because um, I was teaching Grizz how to play when he was wee little. And so he's little, and I'm teaching him how to play Magic Gathering. And that alone is going to take some time. And then the decks and we were using. Grizz. Yeah, and plus it was and, and it was Grizz, and so he's thinking this stuff through. And it was like, and also we were both using kind of slow burn decks so that there wasn't like a whole lot of pressure on it. You know what I mean? Like, if I was playing my Flash deck, trying to teach him how to play, like, now it's my turn and I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff really fast, that's that's not going to work. So, we were playing decks that were designed to be slow. And I was teaching him how to play the game, and it was, you know what I mean? And so, and so it took a, a few hours. And someone, like, people on, I, I told people on my, my Facebook or something that we were, like, three hours into this game. And they were like, why in the world is magic taking three hours? I'm like, listen. <laughs> Just chill. It, it's fine. That's where you teach them. You teach them with a white weenie deck. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I don't. What did I. I played Magic for a very brief period of time. I think I stopped buying Magic cards in like 2000. Oh, I haven't bought cards in years. Now, mainly, I didn't start playing until after 2000. But, but yeah, I haven't bought cards in years. I want to say it was like Ursa's Legacy was when I stopped playing. Um, 
No. So we have that store that's that's entertainment. Yeah. By us and so when I was going to college in Worcester, the the original the the main, the the parent store was uh a walk for, uh walk you know about a mile walk or mile or two walk from from campus mm. and we used to go there on weekends and um we played in a sealed deck tournament and there was one card that I got that was banned in tournament play. <laughs> and I got it in my steel deck. Yeah. And I'm like sitting in there because, you know, you got the you got the starter deck and then you got like what two two uh boosters. And so I had to call the guy over. I'm like, "Can I play this cuz it's not valid in in tournaments?" He's like, yeah. <laughs> I've never done a sealed deck. I've never done a tournament, honestly. Um, but I've never done anything sealed deck. And uh, I was terrible at magic. I'm so. I'm not great. I, I mean, I have fun with it, but uh, if I did a tournament, I don't think it would go well. trying to look up the card now because um but it was a Blind it was a rare mm. but i don't remember now a flying squirrel got into the house yesterday and the cats were chasing it and i'm still finding things that they knocked down <laughs> in the process, and th that, but that was one. Of them. Actually, to this morning, I noticed this sword was on the floor, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, cats are like they didn't kill somebody, like themselves, not me. Not a chance. But it's, <laughs> but it was just like, oh great, they knocked a sword. Yeah. He said it was a flying squirrel. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And all you got, you you got it out though. It sounds like. Yeah. So I actually took a picture of it while I was in my office. I can post it in the Discord. Um, but it was uh, I didn't know what it was at first. I was like, it looks well because I I had a suspicion. I was like, it looks like it might be a a flying squirrel or something like that. Um, but those aren't native to here, are they? And it turns out they are. I didn't think they are. Um, and uh, shared media. Here we go. I'll post it here. Um, yeah, there it is. And and so I, I and then I looked it up, and it turns out it, they are. They're native to this area. But anyway, um, the cats chased it around and kept messing with it because they're cats and they do that. So they kept messing with it all day. They would get it cornered and freaking out and everything. And then, uh, and then they sit back and watch it until it got up, start running again. And then they resume chasing it. And then we get under the couch and they get bored and lay around for a little while until it wandered out. And then they start chasing. And so they they toyed with this thing all day, which like I don't care that much. Like I can I can clean up the mess. Um, but then my kids got home from school and they saw it. And they got emotionally invested. And so I had to put on leather gloves and go catch it and release it outside. <laughs> and the cat, no lie, I, I release this thing out, I catch this thing, I release it outside, I close the door, and my cat, one of my cats, comes in, sees that it's outside, and goes into the kitchen and just starts wailing. Like, he's so mad that I didn't let him kill it. He just, you let my toy out. You let it go. And like, 
<laughs> and he came back, he's sitting at the window, like, because there's the glass sliding doors on my office here. And he's sitting there looking out the, at the driveway, like, making the clacky, I want to murder things noise. <laughs> and I was like, buddy, you had all day. Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> you had your chance. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, so, uh, but that's one of the things that, that they knocked down. And I, I know it can't have been held up like that. Because I know that this went over, oh, there it is. It was on that end. It was like that. There we go. That's how it was. That's how it was. A little bit frayed now, and I'm upset because it's like I can't be so rude and post that. And what is that picture behind you, by the way? Which I mean, I have many pictures behind me. That one hand right there, right where your hand is. This one? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So that is. That is a painting that I found in a thrift store in New Hampshire. And I liked it. So the paint on like it doesn't feel like normal canvas. I think it might actually be burlap. Um either that or it's really messed up old canvas. Um but yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You often go through shopping or? Uh... We, well, this was when Carol and I were away on our anniversary trip that I mentioned. We were actually up at Lake, uh, I think it's Winnipesaukee is the name of it. Um, it's a big deal lake up in New Hampshire that I didn't know about until this year, last year. And uh, so we went there and stayed at a bed and breakfast and ended up. We, were, we didn't plan on it, but we ended up doing a lot of antiquing while we were there. And I got that. I got this sword while we were there. I got this magnifying glass while we were there. A um, couple other things. But yeah. We ended up... Uh, what happens if you put the magnifying glass in front of the uh, the, the camera? I don't know. Um, I do know that I, I, I don't like to leave it because when I leave it straight on like this, it does the camera obscura thing where I can see the outside, like on the wall, and it's really cool. But I have to turn it at night because in the evening when the sun's at a certain angle, it, start, it makes a pinpoint of light, and I don't want it to catch my office on fire. But let me see. This is kind of far away. Let me see if I can... Let's see what happens. I'm down uh two inches too tall well it's it's adjustable i just gotta move this thing first okay so um oh nice <laughs> you see them a little bigger oh definitely are bigger yeah like now it feels like <laughs> you're in some kind of like you know wizard oh, of odds it's also crooked. Hold on, let me get that straight. There we go. That is that is now totally like the Wizard of Oz <laughs> playing in, uh, behind the curtain. <laughs> oh man, and the camera looks huge to her too. But yeah, it's um. You, you can see the edge of the light on the camera. Yeah, thing. you can. <laughs> but it's uh, what it is is it's a it's a Victorian era uh, magnifying glass and stand. So it's Victorian area is it, I'm not familiar with what is the Victorian I know what the Victorian era is but it's I like guess what, this 1860s might, this might actually be Edwardian I think this might actually be Edwardian 
Um, yeah, Victorian would be the uh, like eighteen uh, sixties into eighties ish, and then uh, Edwardian is Edwardian is late eighteen hundreds up to about World War One. And so, most steampunk stuff is fantasy Edwardian. It takes place in the Edwardian period. Hmm. Um, and uh, Sherlock Holmes kind of bridges that. I think, I think his, I think his first books would be considered Victorian, and his later books are Edwardian. Um, yeah. But that so this is actually so this is probably the type of magnifying glass he would have had. That, Arthur that might have been his driving. if he were a real person. Yeah, uh, this is this is probably the type of magnifying glass and stand that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle was describing. So that was pretty cool. And now it sets fire to your wall every day. And now, uh, and now I have to make sure it doesn't set fire to my wall every day. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, I I love that type of stuff. But yeah, that was that was from there, and then the duck was from a uh, was from a yard sale, and so was the pig actually. But I drew the map, which you can't see very well. But So any uh, any what uh, any good New Year's resolutions anybody has? I don't make New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I don't I don't do New Year's resolutions. I have one. Don't bring something in the house that I don't have a spot for. Like a flying squirrel. Like a flying squirrel. <laughs> a flying squirrel will come in and be like, uh, sorry, there's no room for you yet. Let me go make you a bed." Yeah, first. sorry. Once I make the bed for him, then or her, then they can come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> I should say that for even like takeout food. Oh, there's no space for takeout food. You're not coming in. Yeah. I mean, I don't make personal like New Year's resolutions. I did make a, a resolution for work, though. If that counts. what's that? Uh, it's it was to increase. Uh, communication and transparency uh across the organization because uh where i work there is a huge gap in communication does that mean that every report will have a tps sheet on top no it's just to be a little bit more transparent about like the work that my group is doing so that hopefully it would it promotes um reciprocation of said communication from the the other areas that are terrible at communicating so uh lead by example i guess yeah cool i i am of the opinion that if i if i recognize something in myself that i need to improve i should probably just do it and i don't like I'm not waiting until New Year, and at at, at yeah. New Year's, I'm not thinking about that type of thing as much. So I don't really do that. I uh, I try to adjust the problems when I notice them. Yeah, that's fair enough. I yeah. mean, I did I did start that thing just before the the christmas holiday because you know lots of people are asking starting to ask questions about stuff that needed to be communicated over so i just kind of made it official with the new year that that's one thing i want to one goal i want to set for myself for you know work i do have some goals for the channel this year um one is that i i want to try to get sponsorships uh at least one sponsorship for the for the for the channel um and that's i mean 
it'd be nice if we could get a sponsorship where we could actually pay people that are playing the games. Like a lot of these channels, they they pay the people who play the games on them, and I'd love to be able to do that. I just we just don't we don't have any income uh, from this, but uh, but also just to be able to do cool stuff like there is like Tripper is a video editor. He could do a lot of stuff with, like, he could take all of our our streams and turn them into an actual play um, podcast. But he has to have time to do that, and his time costs money um, because he runs a company that does that, you know. Um, and so, you know, there's cool stuff we could do, or even just like doing, you know, having stuff to to do bigger events with our Extra Life stuff, you know what I mean? Um, one of the big things I really want to do is see if I could, I want to actually go to, like, Bad Entertainment and a couple other places and see if I can get them to uh, match donations or something um, during Extra Life. And that's part of, like, the, the event this year, the, the Hungry Dark, relies a lot on audience participation. And so I'm hoping that if we can get some of these organizations on board with with what we're doing uh they will help make people aware of it so and we could raise a lot more money for the hospital hospitals not everyone in the team goes to the hospital everyone currently signed up though but or you could pay that pay the person that that was trying to Sell themselves on your, uh, on yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. Get higher graphic design. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people come into chat to try to sell me something. Get out of here. What the fuck is this? Uh, but yeah. So I went to. Oh, go ahead. Oh. No, go ahead. Um, I did actually get uh, a tax ID for Rabbit Haberdashery, so that we okay, could cool. start, so that we could start moving towards having it be an actual like organization that has things under its umbrella, including the streams um, and my books. Um, but uh, but I don't have federal tax ID. What, uh, what books do you write? Um, I have a series. So I have two books published right now. Um, the part of a series called Tall Tales. They're, they're Tall Tales Volume 1 and Volume 2. Um, ah. Yeah, so Tall Tales Volume 1, Tall Tales Volume 2. Uh, they are. A, they're they're not novels. They're they're short. They're collections of short stories that read like novels. So the short stories are all interconnected. They have mostly the same characters, and they happen in a in an actual progression. Um, but they are short stories um, that are all strung together. And there's five volumes planned. Um, I was hoping to have finished volume three last year i think uh but there's been so much going on and with my headaches and everything it's just it's been delayed significantly um but there's plan to be five parts but they it the series is a mix it's somewhere between paranormal horror and urban fantasy um different stories oh, I thought you said it was pirates no i mean one story one story does follow a, a pirate, um, but no. No, it's paranormal horror and urban fantasy, and some stories lean more in one direction than the other, but but yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's volume volume two has that one? Yeah. There's a story in volume two uh, about a pirate who becomes... Uh, a ghost, or uh, he, he becomes a spirit in the service to the deep. 
Um, and then in volume three, there'll be a follow up to that story. Um, but no, the rest of it is the rest of it is paranormal horror and urban fantasy. Um, I also have a children's book. I'm using a pseudonym for that so that if people like it and they really like their kids like the the children's book and they they want to look up more stuff by that author, they don't accidentally get telltales for their kids. Um, so because <laughs> uh, it is it is not appropriate. Um, I, I don't recommend it for readers under eighteen. Obviously, like at conventions, I've had a few times where parents came out to me and be like, "Should I get this for my kid?" And I'm like, "Listen, I'll tell you why I don't recommend it for people under eighteen." But I mean, they're your kid. You make a decision once you know. Um, and occasionally they just don't buy it. Uh, one or two have bought it. But, but anyway, um, but the children's book is called The Beaver Prince, and it is a fairy tale. And I've written it already. Um, I have already gotten the proofs of the illustrations from my friend Alex. He's just coloring them. And then that's all I'm waiting for is, is the colored illustrations. Uh, and then I can put the whole book together and, and get it published. Um, and I have a book that I'm working on on the side that is an analysis of the Book of Obadiah. That sounds like Old Testament, it if is. I were to guess. Yeah, it's a minor prophet. It's the smallest book in the Old Testament. It's uh, 21 verses. And almost no one, like, I've never heard a sermon on it. When I went to look up, uh, when I look, went to look into what resources were available to study it, there were not many. <laughs> and so uh, I, I preached, I did a three-part sermon series on it. And so, because there's so few resources on the book available, um, I decided to take all of my notes and everything from that sermon series and make a book out of it. So, uh, that's, in, that's in progress as well. Nice. It's good use. Yeah. Actually, I think on the stream, I have... Yeah, there it is. I have a I have a thing for that for the author. Anyway, Dave, you were about to say something? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm sure Chris Chris saw the saw the story on on my Facebook feed. I don't go on Facebook. Mm. You tell me what uh tell me what it was. Oh, I I swear that I I swear at some kids at at uh I went to see um uh Godzilla minus one mm. the other uh last last Tuesday. I do remember seeing this post and. I I was super patient. Like so the movie was really good from what I saw, but so the first hour there were a bunch of kids like in the row next to mine across, you know, across the the stairs up and uh they were talking and just chatting for the first hour in the movie. Uh. Where it, it it got so distracting and and so Godzilla, like minus one, it's it's your classic um, Toei uh, Godzilla film. So it's it's in Japanese. It's subtitled. It, it's like it, it's a period. It's a period um, Godzilla film. You know, it takes place during World War Two, basically. Mm. And they were just chatting, chatting, chatting. Finally, it just got really it like there was a quiet scene and it quieted down. And I just turned at, I turned to them and I was like, are you going to talk during the, 
the, you know, the entire film. And I just told them to shut the. <laughs> and for next 40 minutes, they almost got through the rest of the movie without saying anything. It was, you know, it was just silence from that row. <laughs> Good for you. I was not happy. I almost, I almost got up and left. I was gonna. I, I almost asked for a refund. So that's a movie that I'll be looking forward, uh, forward to when they do a physical release. Far better than the than the. Uh, the Universal MonsterVerse uh, Godzilla films or the Monarch, whatever. Uh, uh, Legacy of Monster or whatever. Yeah, whatever. The the current um, Hollywood Godzilla f- films are. Yeah. Oh, so it's not a continuation. It's a separate... Is, no. is it not part of that universe then? So it's like the classic Godzilla universe. Oh, so like okay. The, the, um yeah like the original like toei which is the i think was the original um I've, production company for 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 godzilla I've in japan that, i've heard that godzilla minus one was great and that it, it, really it was did. awesome yep i heard that it really got back to kind of the roots of what godzilla was trying to be in the first place yeah and um so like one of the one of the um like the first time you see godzilla he's like tiny Hmm. you know like he's still big but like and like he grows throughout the throughout the film so that was like their first their first encounter with him I kind of want to check it out at some point because I used to love Godzilla movies, and uh, I still kind of do. I've checked out a few uh, more recent ones. What was that one? The ones that the anime one that was on Netflix that was part three parts. Yep, I watched that one recently. Uh. I, they also, I think, they have a bunch of uh, the classic ones on HBO on Max. Okay. I, but uh, King of Monsters, I, there's a couple I haven't seen yet. There's a few that I haven't seen yet. Um, whatever that Godzilla versus Kong new newer one is. Um, I think that I have to look. I think we've watched all the the recent ones. I think the recent ones are the ones that I've seen the least of. Well, that's okay. They get progressively worse. Yeah, in my opinion. Let's see here. Um, I mean, there's a couple of the old ones that I missed. Like I, I never. I don't think I ever saw Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. Um, I don't have a. I didn't see the one where they. Get, I think they sent. Uh, I think there was one where they got sent to like the tenth planet, Planet X, or something. I didn't get to see that one. Um, or Mechagodzilla too. Uh, but let me see here. I did see the American. The one in 98, you remember with Matthew Broderick or whatever? Um, so they make fun of that um, in... I think it it was either... Was it uh, Godzilla 2000? Well, there was... Or... There, was a, there was a Godzilla 2000, and then there was just Godzilla that was released in 98, which had... Matthew no, I, I think Godzilla 2000 was... 
produced in in Japan, and they make yeah. I, they make fun of the Matthew Broderick Godzilla, and they're like, "That's not that wasn't Godzilla." Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I still haven't seen the 2014 Godzilla. I haven't seen Shin Godzilla yet. I haven't seen uh, Shin Godzilla was awesome. I, so yeah, and I, I haven't have... seen King of the Monsters or Godzilla versus. Yeah, a lot of the basically, I think I've only seen like two post. 2000. Yeah, I have some of those on my Plex. Nice pick into that. Um, because I bought a bunch of the the older ones, um, including like the, the all of the, the the three or four of the Mothra movies, um, and I ripped the, all of those to my to my NAS. Um, I know that I have the f- 2014 Godzilla. I was curious about that one and Shin Godzilla. Yeah. I wanted to see both of them. I think it's weird. Oh, I also have the 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 Gamera, Gamera ones movies, mm. or Gamera. I don't know how do you pronounce it. Probably butchering it. I apologize. Um, but I think I had a couple, a few of the Mothra movies too. Yeah, the King the original King Kong versus Godzilla from 1962. Mm. Um and I think I have like Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla and a couple of those. I don't remember which which libraries I'm sharing with you, to be honest, Tim. <laughs> uh, uh, the DVD rip one, the anime, one that's just called movies, and one of I think one of TV shows. Okay, Shin Godzilla's in movies, and there's a few of the other Godzilla movies in there too. Yeah. So, yeah, I I mean. My problem is part of my problem is that I don't watch much of anything with any regularity. So like yep. I haven't Carol and I watched the Big Fat Quiz of twenty twenty three last night. And prior to that, I think the last time and then like a, a few nights earlier I sat down in the living room because I wasn't feeling well and uh we watched uh, a home remodeling show together. But I think the last time that I watched anything on TV prior to that, that wasn't like specifically a movie night with the kids for Christmas movies, because like Muppet Christmas Carol and stuff. Yeah. Um, would have been in like October. Yeah. Like I just I don't watch anything, uh, and so yeah. So I get I get like if I get even just a little bit behind. I get way behind. Oh, I get it. I I yeah. I um don't purchase many movies at all these days. So I I went out and I actually I bought Oppenheimer yesterday. So that's um that's on on Plex now. I think Carol but, and I went to the movies twice last year, and one of them was Barbie. But yeah, I used to I used to buy movies religiously. But having kids and a more expensive mortgage doesn't help. So uh, it burns out the uh, discretionary income pretty fast. Yeah. Yep. I I was never really like that though. Like I I never really bought much TV or movies or anything. I would 
I would catch things like with friends or whatever, but that was about it. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot of like it's it's fun because I I exist in a lot of like geek spaces like this one, and um, but like if you've ever seen like the comparison, the difference between a geek and a nerd, uh, where the geek like knows all the pop culture and the nerd just knows like science and stuff. Um, I, I'm definitely more on the nerd side. I, there's so much stuff that people are like, Oh, are you familiar with this? Like, Oh, you're a gamer. What was your favorite like game when you were a kid? I, was, I didn't, I wasn't playing video games when I was a kid. Like I still don't play video games really. Yeah. But. So, but it's 2024. So, I didn't start collecting movies until really around 98. So, we're coming up on what 26 years of collecting. Good. But I have over, I want to say, 3,000 movies now. Wow. Damn. You know, I, I, I had, um, before Blu-ray came out, I was at just over 2000 DVDs in my collection and the movies that I've ripped to my NAS is just over 600. And that's not including like TV shows because I don't rip those. They're too much of a pain in the butt. I think I maxed so. out at somewhere around 20. I think I had one of the at one point. <laughs> and a handful of VHS. Hey, if you ever find Firefly or Serenity on VHS, if you are ever out and about, and you see that on VHS, I will pay you back. <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. Next time I'm, because next time we're out antiquing and thrifting, I guess is probably where I would see it. So I own that movie in every single format that it was released on, except for VHS. Oh wow. <laughs> Including uh, the the UMD, which is was the little the little P PlayStation portable discs. <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> or is it wait? Are those the ones that were like circular, but then had two flat sides? Yes, they yes. were like. Um... <laughs> I remember those. Yeah. <laughs> so I've I've yeah I own it like two copies on DVD because I bought the I bought the like the the collector's edition. I own it on the UMD. I bought it on HD DVD, Blu-ray, and also the 4K release. <laughs> Did I tell you, we, we, my friends and I decided to play a Star Trek campaign once, and we built our characters, and we, we went to start the session, and then we stopped and realized we had just kind of recreated Firefly, but in the Star Wars universe. And we're just like, we're just gonna roll with it. We're just gonna do this, and it just was, go with it. Yeah, it was great because it was um because what it was was we were we were we were like well if we're playing Star Wars, we we need a way to get around, and also like uh, there was different things that like we want to do, and so I was like well I'm gonna play a smuggler, and I'm gonna have a ship, and I I I, I spent the stuff to make sure that I had a ship available. And then everyone else was either people who were part of my crew or who were renting space on the ship for some reason. And then we, we looked at it and we were like, we've, we've just built Firefly. And it was it was set during the Old Republic. One of the, uh, like, kind of the, the closest thing we had to book was actually a Jedi who was undercover. And my, my character was like this, this smuggler captain guy who did not who was not a fond who was not terribly fond of the republic government um and it was his ship and he was the captain of it and so he was very mal 
but also um, he was a force. He was a force user who didn't believe in the force. So, so part. So we had this restriction that he could only get. He could only buy force powers that he could justify in some other way. He couldn't have access to anything like he couldn't have access to force lightning because and he had his no stick. He has no stick. Yeah, I, I have told you about this guy. That was his don't stick. <laughs> oh, that's right, the don't. Stick. Yeah, the that's don't right. stick. It was my favorite, one of my favorite gags I ever did. <laughs> Tango, did you hear about this one? No. He um. So he he had all this, stuff, and he just believed that the force was propaganda being put forth by the, the Jedi Council to maintain power. Um, so he had, like, force jump and stuff like that, because he could, he was he was from a high graph planet, so of course he can jump farther, and, and all this other stuff. He was very com- he was a very convincing person, so he was able to have, like, the Jedi mind trick, but he didn't believe that it was magic that he was doing. But anyway, so um, the Jedi, though, picked up that he was a force user. And was like, why is this guy not a Jedi? Is he a Sith? Is there something weird going on with this guy? And so he kept like hanging around the captain to try to figure out what his deal was. And eventually it was just like, I, I think this guy honestly doesn't believe the Force exists. I think he's being honest. But he went into the captain's quarters at one point and there was a lightsaber just sitting on a shelf. And he's like, where'd you get that? You're not allowed to have that. Where'd you get that? And he's like, oh, you know, I was transporting another Jedi a few years ago and he died. That's my don't stick. And he goes, what do you mean it's your don't stick? He goes, you'll see. And a few sessions later, we were in negotiations. Uh, we were talking to some criminal warlord. We were going to be moving some some illicit materials for him. Uh, we were negotiating the terms. And that Jedi was there in disguise as, like, my bodyguard. And things got heated. And that guy's bodyguard started to step forward. And before the Jedi reacted, my guy just opens his jacket to reveal the lightsaber and goes, don't. And rolled Intimidate. And that was... And everyone backed off. And he was like, I'm sorry, you have a lightsaber and the entire use for it is to scare people. To intimidate. <laughs> it was it's an intimidation tool. That's my don't stick. <laughs> But yeah, and then most of his force points though were spent on luck because you could do um, you could do stuff where in that system you had these force points that you would use to power certain abilities. But if you wanted to, you could just spend the force points to increase your chance of success on a given roll. And so more often than not, that's what he used his force points on was just to make himself luckier. Um, and so there was a point where we were in a space battle. Uh, and some some people tried to ju- some people tried to like mug us while we were flying by. They tried to they they tried to intercept us and and steal from us. And a couple people with grav boots jumped onto the ship, and so they're trying to cut a hole into the hull of the ship to get inside. And that Jedi is over there, got his lightsaber ready for them to come through the wall, and he's gonna fight them. And my character was just like, let me just uh I'm. There's space debris lit all over the place, right? Like, there's we've been in a firefight. There's debris around, and the GM was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna use the tractor beam to grab a piece of metal and throw it along the edge of the ship to hit them." And he was like, "I don't know if you can do that." And I was like, "I'm spending force points. Let's roll it." And I nat twenty. And so the Jedi, like, finishes getting ready, gets outside and looks, and there's just a pair of grav boots with, like, two inches of legs sticking out. <laughs> and that's it. The person's gone. <laughs> he was like, you can't tell me you're not using the Force. And my guy's like, busy. I'm busy. <laughs> but he was a fun character. I, I, I still I still want to play in the Star Wars universe again. Um, 
I had this idea of I wanted to play in the Star Wars universe with all, all the baggage of the Star Wars story. And so I was thinking of doing a campaign that would be set in the early days of Galactic Community. So the Jedi Order is a new religious group that's almost entirely centered on the planet that they started on. You know what I mean? There's there the Republic isn't even thought of yet. There's just like everyone kind of started to make contact and get access to hyperspace travel like 30 years ago um, and set a game in that time period and just go with it. Like all the rules of the Star so Wars. Back when like they're still writing the galactic map and it's not even, yeah, it hasn't moved a curse on yet. Yeah. Yeah. There's no Republic. They haven't finished exploring the galaxy. They don't, they don't know any, like none of the ships that we, recognize exist yet the jedi are a religious order that has not found because kyber crystals come from a different planet than the jedi order does and so they didn't yep. have they didn't have lightsabers until they made their way to kyber and so the idea like this is before they've even got like lightsabers aren't even really a thing yet because they they haven't instituted that yet like very early in the galaxy's history, um, obviously very late in the history of these cultures, because they've been on their planets for you know millions of years, but very early in galactic history, um, which I think is something like ten or fifteen thousand years before the events of Star Wars movies. Yeah, so if not more. Yeah, and the, there's no, there's almost no history of this time period. And so you, we could just, we get all the rules of the time period. We get all, or we get all the rules of the galaxy, all of the cool, like force stuff and the different races and everything without any of the baggage. There's no story. There's no continuity we need to worry about. Like, as long as the galaxy survives our campaign, everything in the future will still happen. <laughs> you have to leave a few planets intact. Yeah. You have to leave a few planets intact, but if you pull that off, man. The rest of the Star Wars can happen, but like that's nice. that's a campaign that I I kind of like to play because then you just have it's just it's just a free for all and we have no idea what's going on. No one has any idea what's going on. We barely right. Know you have other. no. Uh, you don't have to have the you know the knowledge of it in order to play it. Yeah. Truly. Yeah, you just get. You know, the alternative is. Because an alternative that I've actually seen other people propose is do a Star Wars movie that takes place in a different galaxy but the same universe. So it has the same rules but none of the baggage. And uh so in a galaxy even further away. Yeah. And like that that's an option as well. But I, I like the idea of this is this is the the galaxy that we know from Star Wars, but it doesn't the galaxy that we know doesn't exist yet. This is this is the time this is the Wild West period before that the Republic or anything exists. Yeah. Let's see, what is that timeline? So I said that Dawn of the Jedi is 25,000 years before Yavin. Okay. And, and when's the When's the birth of the... Oh, here we go. Timeline of Galactic History on Wikipedia. Um, before the Republic... Yeah, okay. So the Republic is founded. The Old Republic is 25,000. 25,000 to 1,000. Yeah. Before, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Dawn of the Jedi is around. So, yeah, this would be... This would be in the Before the Republic time period. Be pretty cool because you still assume would have the you know the ability for travel yeah oh all right it's getting bad time for me yeah 
We'll call pineapple, maybe. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's time. Oh, let me see if that's if that. I want to see if stream hears it. Pineapple. It looks like stream hears it. I, I heard it that time. Oh, oh okay. There you go. It was loud too. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. All right. Well, yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, don't forget, uh, a new year of fundraising has begun. So check out our team page on Rabbit Haber Dashery and keep an eye out for our special events. That's going to include um, probably something for Tabletop Appreciation Weekend. Uh, definitely our 24-hour gaming event in November, which will be the Hungry Dark. Um, so I would encourage you to check that out. Um, In fact, here, uh, there is, there's the link to the Hungry Dark. Uh, all the information on what that's going to be and how your donations can directly impact the story. Um, so please take a look at that and uh, consider helping us out, helping us help uh, children's hospitals. And in the meantime, thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you. There is no Star Trek tomorrow because Tripper is still away. Um, so I guess uh, unless there's some surprise streams, which there might be because I've been testing out stuff with Talia and everything, um, next session, next thing we do is going to be next, next scheduled show will be next week. So thank you very much and we will see you next time. Good night, folks. Good night. Have a good night.
Pineapple.